Hello there. In the last video, we mentioned the skeletal system. We talked about the skeletal system. We talked about the bones of the trunk. Yeah, we mentioned how the vertebrae are different among themselves. And we also talked about the... Here are the vertebrae, here are how they're different. We also talked about the costal bone, which is the bones of the ribs, basically. And we also mentioned the stenum bone, which is the bone here, where the ribs actually just end, basically, the, the opposite side of the backbone. So to, in today's video, we'll be talking about the joints of the trunk. So there are many bones here, but they, they need to come together. They need to be joined together. So <clears throat> this is also divided among itself between the joints, between the vertebral columns, between every single vertebrae and the other, and the joints in the thorax, the joint in the, in the costal bones. So let's talk about the vertebral column first. Let's start from the beginning where the backbones really start. It starts in the, we all know that it starts in the atlas, which is the C1, the first ever vertebrae, and then after that comes the axis. So those, uh, those uh, joints are actually different from the joints of the different vertebrae. Why is that? Because it comes in the beginning and it should tie it itself to the skull, basically. So in the beginning, we need to mention the fact that the axis has the dents. This piece of extra bone here and why is this bone here i was asking myself and now i know this bone is here to tie the axis to the atlas bones the c2 to c1 and how they're tied together is that the, we have the dense bone here or the, another name for it is the peg bone and how it's tied it's tied by this very strong ligament called the transverse ligament of atlas this uh the, the, this horizontal ligament here and as support we have the superior longitudinal band and the inferior long, longitudinal band those two bands here support the, the 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 what the transverse ligament of atlas does which is keeping the axis and the atlas bones together and on top of all of that we have this ligament here called the tectoral membrane. The, the tectoral membrane is basically the beginning of the posterior longitudinal ligament, which is a ligament that stays all the way from the beginning of the back to the end of the back. I'll be talking about it in a second. So here's a very general picture of it. I think this is one of the most important pictures. You need to keep it in mind. All right, next up, we have the joints of the vertebral bodies. So what are the vertebral bodies? As I've mentioned before, every vertebrae has a body and it has a arch. So the joints of the bodies, we're just talking about the joints that keep the bodies together. And it's actually very simple, very straightforward. We have the anterior longitudinal ligament, which is this very strong ligament on the back here. And I've, hap I've happened to know that it's one of the strongest ligaments on the back because it needs to hold up a lot of force. Yeah. And on the other side of the anterior longitudinal ligament, we have the posterior longitudinal ligament, which is the opposite side of the anterior longitudinal ligament. It just provides extra support to the anterior longitudinal ligament, but on the other direction. So posteriorly. All right. So and also between every vertebrae, every vertebrae, vertebral body and another, we have this here, this ligament or this uh, joint called the intervertebral disc. Yeah. And what is the intervertebral disc? What is inside of it? There are two things inside of it. We have the annulus fibrosus, the outer part of it, and we have the nucleus pulposus. So nucleus in the middle, pulposus. Yeah. So the nucleus pulposus is actually very hydrophilic, uh, hydrophobic, sorry. Oh, my bad. It's very hydrophobic. So it needs water, it gathers water within. So many injuries could happen by it basically going out of the nucleus pulposus and into the direction, into other directions. We all know here is that the spinal cord goes through here. So when the uh, nucleus pulposus goes outside, it, it may injure the spinal cord. So it's very dangerous. So we need to keep, keep this safe by also always keeping our back straight. So... Here's another picture of the anterior, posterior longitudinal ligament, which is a ligament, like I said, that is posterior to the anterior longitudinal ligament, the one on the back. And we also have the intervertebral disc, which is the one here, like I've mentioned, consists of annulus fibrosus, nucleus pulposus, very, very delicate, I would say. And uh, here's an inferior aspect of it, just looking at it from down. Uh, from down up and we we can see here that the nucleus pulposus is in the middle we have the annulus fibrosus on the outer parts and we have the intervertebral disc which is the outermost part of it yeah so this out of the way we need to mention the joints of the vertebral arches so now we forget the joints of the vertebral body the ones we've mentioned before we talk about the joints of the vertebral arches so i happen to know that one of the most important um, joints or ligaments there is a uh, ligamentum flavum or ligamenta flava for the uh, for the plural. 
it is basically this this uh, this uh, ligament in here just keeps the bodies together we also have the interspinous ligament which is the ligament between those parts here between the the processes the spinous process so we have here this is a spinous process spinous process bone and here is the interspinosus ligament between them we also can notice here that the there's a transverse process and the superior articular process so how the vertebrae stay together is that they meet in the superior articular process the is the superior articular process of the the, the vertebrae down meets the inferior articular process of the vertebrae up. As you can see here, this is the inferior articular process and this is the superior articular process. And they meet in that joint in here called the zygophysial joint. I fucking destroyed that name. I do not know how to spell it well. And here's another, how to pronounce it well. Here's another aspect of it, just cut in half. So yeah, another another way that the, the vertebral arches stay together is that there is this ligament here called the intertransversal ligament. And what that is basically is that it's a ligament that ties the transverse process together. But I've heard that it's a very weak ligament and it's, it doesn't provide that much of a support. So yeah, let's, let's move on. The next part is a uh, ligamentum nachia or nachai. I do not know how to pronounce that. It's just this ligament here that ties the back of the skull to the, uh, the end of the neck, basically the, the, at the end of uh, the uh, C. We have, I have C1, C2, C3, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. So just the end of it. And it's, it's this ligament here. I'm, I'm guessing it provides extra support to the um, joints staying together. All right. So that out of the way, let's talk about the joints of the, of the thorax, the joints that ties the uh, ribs together and the ribs to the vertebrae and the ribs to the stenum so uh oh, not that yeah here thorax so it's also divided into three parts the costo vertebral joint which by the name i could guess that it ties a costal bone to the vertebrae itself and yes i am correct it ties this here's the vertebrae it ties the costal bone to it and i happen to know that there are two parts of it there is this joint in here called the superior costal facet it just it there's this joint here and there's another joint in here. You see, there is uh, ligaments here that ties those together, I believe, for extra support. Next up, we have the sternocostal joints, which is which are basically a bunch of, I'd say, cartilages here, the costal cartilages that tie the costal bones to the stenum in here. So next up, lastly, we have the intercrondal joint. So we know that those are the, the, the corants, the, those here are the ligaments in here, yeah? But we have inside of it, we have joints in here. You see one, two, those four joints and four on the other side. Just it ties the false lips, ribs to the actual rib in here, which ends up in the stenum. Uh, another very important joint I should mention is this one here. Yeah, the synovial joint, which is a joint between the stenum and the cartilages of the costal bones. So yeah, that should be, that should sum it up. Maybe I've missed a couple here or there, but that should do the trick of having a very uh, general idea of it. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. I hope that was helpful.